hell over one retrocracer. My very first console that my family got their hands on was a Sega Master Systems. This was my first meeting with the 8-bit games of this generation. In other words, I was a Sega boy, who later got my hands on a Sega Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis as it was named in the US, as well as the Sega Game Gear. Many of my friends had Nintendo, so I did get to both play and see a lot of Nintendo games, but as for me, I was all about Sega. As with all the consoles back in the days, you had a lot of good games, <laughs> a lot of bad games, games that made no sense at all, and games that were just... Eh. Making a top 10 list is never easy, seeing as it's first of all subjective, but second of all, I haven't played all the Sega games that ever existed, so the list will be affected by that as well. But either way, in this video, I will give you my top 10 Sega Master System games. Let's go! Number 10 Let's start off the list with one of the first Sega games to be released, Fantasy Zone. This game was released by Sega in 1986. I do remember playing this as a kid, and the first impression of this game is that it's colorful, surreal, and has some great music. You are playing as a spaceship and can buy upgrades and weapons to help you on your journey. Every level ends with a stage boss, which, I'm not gonna lie, to this day still creeps me out a bit. I'm actually surprised not more kids got nightmares from this game, but even so, it's still a really fun game to play and deserves a spot on this list. Number 9 Originally a Sega arcade game called Teddy Boy Blues, this game was ported to the Sega Master System under the name Teddy Boy in 1985. There is no denying this is a really, really strange game. There is no story, no point, and even, as I understand, no end to the game. It's just an infinite loops of levels, and your objective in each level is to shoot everything that moves to make them shrink so you can collect them. For some reason, I just really remember loving this game as a kid, probably because of the fun music and the wacky gameplay. I wanted to put this game on the list because we can't ever forget about Teddy Boy. I mean, it's Teddy Boy. Teddy Boy. Number 8. At number 8, we have the game with the most word puns of them all, James Pond codename Robocod. This game was released by Millennium Interactive in 1991. It was first released for the Atari and Sega Mega Drive, and then later basically ported to every other console, including the Sega Master System. This is basically your standard platformer, but with some unique mechanics. The worlds are fun, colorful, wacky, and it just feels like a joy to play. The controls are actually pretty smooth, which was not always the case back in the days. The unique mechanic of the game is your ability to stretch out your body to grasp onto the ceiling and use the ceiling to move around. This makes for some really fun puzzles as well during the gameplay. Number 7 The second game in the Alex Kidd series is... Uh... <laughs> memorable to say the least. This game was released by Sega in 1988. Alex Kidd The Lost Stars is first of all a really fun game to play, and I remember how interesting it was to see what was to come next. The worlds are colorful and the music is great, but we can't talk about this game without mentioning some of the more weirder stuff. So we have a dog that says bow wow, fight enough, we have cards, we have chickens, we have zombies, okay, uh, okay, now it's getting a bit weird. What the f- what the- It's a naked man with a red mohawk and sunglasses farting skulls. Oh my god. And now we have severed heads rolling around. This game has no limits. And this is what you get when the developers are clearly on an old mushroom diet. And I love it! Number 6 Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse was released by Sega in 1990 for the Sega Mega Drive. 
It was then later released in an 8-bit version for the Sega Master System and Sega Game Gear. Castle of Illusion is in all just a great platformer. The music is absolutely amazing and just have this distinct Disney feeling to it. The levels are varied, colorful and fun. The layout of the game is very similar to another game that will appear on this list, where it starts you off with a few different levels to complete in the order of your choosing, before unlocking another set of levels for you to complete in the order that you like. Can you guess which game it is? Platforming games back in the days would either be a hit or a miss, and much of it depends on the controls, but luckily this game is pretty good in that department as well, and that's why it deserves a spot on this list. Number 5. If you answered the Lucky Dime Caper starring Donald Duck to my question earlier, then you're absolutely right. The game was released by Sega in 1991 for both the Sega Master System and Sega Game Gear. This was a game I only played on the Sega Game Gear when I was a kid, and I still remember every single level as of this day. That just tells you how great this game was. As with Castle of Illusion, you start the game by choosing between three different levels, represented by Huey, Dewey and Louie. After rescuing them, you can choose between three new levels, before heading over to Magic of the Spells Castle. You can attack using a hammer or a throwing disc, and as I remember, having the disc fully powered up feels so much better than using the hammer, so if you ever feel like trying this game out, get the throwing disc. Number 4. Ah yes, Bubble Bobble. Released in 1986, this game was developed and published by Taito. I would say this is one of the most fun games to play with a friend on the Sega Master System. Playing this game alone is fun, but playing with a second player is a blast. Thinking back on it, this game was really ambitious with a total of 100 levels to complete. And remember, there was no such thing as saving the game back then. The levels are varied and it gets progressively more difficult for each level. This was also one of the first games ever to have multiple endings, which probably most kids didn't know back then. As for myself, I never completed the game as a kid, but even after the 50th playthrough of the game, it never feels stale or boring. It is just a super enjoyable game to play. Number 3 the first game I ever played on any console was Alex Kidd in Miracle World. The reason for that is that my parents bought the Sega Master System Mark II, which had this game built into the console. This game was developed and published by Sega, and was first released in 1986. I have, to this day, never finished the game. It is an insanely hard game, and the reason for that? One hit death, three lives, game over. Well, there is a way of continuing the game on the same level, but I had no idea about that when I was a kid. As with so many other games back then, the music is great, the levels are varied and colorful, and this game was also my very first meeting with the now famous game of rock, paper, scissors. All in all, a really fun game which also have a lot of variety and secrets to explore. Probably one of the hardest games I've ever played, but still, it's so much fun. Number 2 At number 2, we have, not surprisingly, Sonic the Hedgehog. Or maybe some of you are surprised this isn't at the number 1 spot. This game was released by Sega in 1991. I'll admit, I got a bit confused when I read about the Sonic games because, as I understand, the first Sonic game was released for the Sega Mega Drive and then later the same year, it was released in an 8-bit version for the Sega Master System. So it was the same as Castle of Illusion, that it was ported to an earlier console. I could swear my first Sonic game was on the Sega Master Systems, but now I'm not even sure anymore. But either way, Sonic will forever be a classic and just as fun to play today as it was back then. Number 1. And at number 1, we have one of my favorite games of all times, Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap. The game was developed by Weststone and published by Sega in 1989. 
I remember this game mostly for being the first game that I actually spent a lot of hours on to be able to complete. Most games back then could easily be completed within an hour, but this one is actually a pretty long game, and thankfully it has a save feature. Though the password is… well, it's long. The game is somewhat non-linear as you have several paths to take, but some you have to get back to to be able to traverse. You will collect new items like armor, swords, items, and magic spells that will help you on your journey. The different armors and weapons have different stats and abilities and you need to collect crystals throughout the game to be able to unlock new armor sets. Bringing a low level armor set or weapon to a dungeon or a boss could make things really difficult for you. You play as a variety of characters with their own special abilities, and the game is also filled with lots of secrets. The best part, in my opinion though, is the music. Every single soundtrack in the game is a masterpiece that fits perfectly to its environment. I still remember the first time I ventured up the tower to find the door in the sky that led me to this surreal world and with the music it actually made me feel a bit uneasy. For anyone who never played this one before, I highly recommend trying it out. A remake of the game was released in 2017 as well, so if the pixelated graphics isn't your thing, then I highly recommend you checking out the remake. And yeah, that was my top 10 list of the best games, in my opinion, for the Sega Master System. Was there any games I didn't mention that you feel should be on the list? Give me your favorite games in the comments below. And until next time everyone, carry out.